Do you guys have thumb drives floating around? I know I've got a lot of them. And the problem is, is thumb drives, as they get larger, they have to get faster. But are they really fast enough? I've got an economical solution for you guys. You will not believe that it is way faster than even the fastest standard USB thumb drive. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have got the craziest thing that you've probably never heard of, which is gonna change the game if you transport large amounts of data at one time. Traditionally, people use thumb drives. Thumb drives used to be reasonably fast. You're talking five to 12 megabits per second with a standard USB thumb drive. And then they came out with these USB 3.0, 3.1 drives. You can tell because they're blue. They were even faster yet, but as data gets larger, sometimes we need to step it up a little bit. And that's why I've got this beautiful guy right here. Now you can tell that I have it hooked up to a USB-A, but USB-C to USB-C is obviously the fastest way to go. And I'm going to show you the secrets behind this guy right here, because all this other stuff is completely outdated. In comes this guy. Now, as I said before, a standard USB stick like this guy right here, it transports data reasonably fast, but I transport one gig, two gig, three gig files, sometimes way more than that when I'm dealing with 4K footage. And the problem is, is it just can't keep up. It takes way too long to deal with data on thumb drives. And if anything, the thumb drive itself is a weak point because if you ever break this guy right here, which does happen because it's a dingle hopper sticking off the side of your computer, it's going to go really wrong. So I come up with this guy. It uses an NVMe drive inside it, which you can get from repurposed old computers. You can find NVMe drives in 128, 256, 512, even one terabytes. I found one terabytes on Facebook Marketplace for $60 yesterday. But I'm going to build one today here for you guys to show you exactly what's going on. Because with this drive right here, I am able to get a sustained 300 plus megabytes per second, which is insane. Absolutely insane speeds. You can run an entire operating system off of this guy. You can transport video files like I do. I run video games off of this guy. This one right here is actually for a MAME arcade and it, it's a uh, 512 gigabyte. But I'm gonna build an even better one for you guys today. I have elected to use the Samsung 980 Pro because this is one of the, the best of the best when it comes to solid state drives. So let's go ahead and open that guy up, let you guys see what it's gonna look like. I've been using Samsung drives for years. They've been very dependable. And my goal for this video is to make a thumb drive that I can use for transporting and archiving video footage. So this is an M.2 form factor NVMe drive and the 980 Pro has got the much better NAND chips. You can see it's actually quite small. This is a one terabyte drive. And yep, there's just a manual in there. I don't need none of that. Useless. This is the secret sauce. Now there are several of these and I will leave them, the links to both of these in the video description. This is a USB-C to NVMe converter. There's several of them on Amazon. I've tried obviously a couple different ones. And at first I got these kits to read the NVMe drives so I can rip data off of medical equipment. And that's why I started um, using these adapters. But then I realized that the transfer rates were through the roof, completely through the roof compared to all these guys right here. So that's why I started using it for doing video. And I'm gonna build a bigger version of it for you guys today. 
All right. So one of the things that you guys should know is that NVMe drives, they do get warm. And if they get warm, they can handle it, but it's not ideal. So we always want to do whatever we can to limit the amount of heat. And the best way to do that is a product that I've featured on this channel before, which is this stuff right here. It's the K5 Pro. Now this is a 10 gram container of K5 Pro. And I packed this guy right here absolutely full of K5 Pro on the bottom and the top. So it does make it a wee bit of a heavy drive, but yesterday I copied 500 gigs. I filled this thing completely up with old retro video games, and this guy got pretty toasty. But because it's full of the K5 Pro, it has a lot of thermal mass, and that thermal mass helps dissipate the heat away from this guy, specifically this guy right here. And this guy right here, this metal chip, this is actually the controller for the NVMe. Now NVMe's can handle a bit of heat, but we always want to try and keep them as cool as possible. So let's go ahead and open up the K5 Pro. This is some good stuff. I've used it. Actually, my 3090 video card has got K5 Pro underneath it because I have a water block on my uh, 3090. And I do believe my motherboard has um, K5 Pro underneath instead of regular thermal pads. So one of the things I gotta warn you about is the K5, it is a very viscous, thick fluid. And the problem with it is that it gets on everything. So I do have a mat here, I should be using gloves. I think I'm gonna do an all right job. Now this guy right here, the Sabrent, um, a wee bit different than this one. This one here, you depress this little guy right here and it slides off which was a little bit of a hassle because you have a sliding cover along with that thermal compound, which you can imagine it squirted out right here on the gap because, you know, more is better. And this one here has a hinge. I really like this one because it has, for one thing, uh, it's got more of a heat sink with this guy right here. Um, I don't see, and it didn't come with any thermal pads, so that's gonna work out even better. Now down on the bottom here, you can see that it's keyed for the different lengths of NVMEs. You can see that this one here will take up the whole entire distance. And then there's a little key right here that spins and locks it in. So the first things first is we're gonna apply K5 Pro to the bottom right here. And then I'm gonna absolutely gob the K5 Pro on the top. And then I'm gonna hinge it closed and this guy is gonna be done. It's that fast. And then we're gonna do some benchmarks and I'll show you exactly what type of performance we can expect because these drives are screaming fast. Now the K5 Pro, like I said, it's very viscous and because it's gonna sit pretty flat here, I've gotta put it kind of thin on the bottom. Whereas this guy right here, I had to put an extra amount on the bottom because it has like a channel, like a C channel and you have to fill up that cavity in order to um, get good con conduction. So that's what I did, and it took more of the K5 Pro because of that. And for this build, I've switched over to this model of a USB-C adapter, and I think this one's gonna work out probably even better. Now, like I said before, uh, closest to the port um, is gonna be where that thermal concentration is going to be on that controller. So that's where I want to put this stuff really thin is right there. And this stuff is not easy to spread around as you can tell. There we go. All right. Now that's probably pretty good for the bottom. That's going to give me a lot of contact right here. Let's put a little bit more right here by the back of the chip. All right, so then this guy slides in like so. All right, that one actually goes in pretty stiff. And then this lever rotates around and it locks it in, you see that? So now it's sealed in pretty good. Now I wanna put a thin coat right here because of the profile. So a thin coat right here, just enough to have really good contact because it's got this nice aluminum heatsink. So I think that this guy is going to use half the amount of K5 Pro 
that the, the other unit did. Some of these cases actually come with thermal pads, like carbon thermal, thermal pads, which is so cool. Um, I don't know how they work compared to the K5 Pro because the K5 Pro is very unspecific. You just put a glob on there, and as you sandwich it down, it kind of closes the gap. Now, you can see I'm probably putting too much K5 Pro on. Yep. So I'm just keeping it away from the pins. Applying a nice thin coat. Here we go. Get the sides because I don't want to squish it. Squish out the sides there. There we go. And put a little bit more right down here just because I know that's the problem area. All right. So that's it. You can see I have a little bit extra down here and that's going to squish down. And the cool thing about K5 Pro is it's not conductive. So even if I got it down on these pins, it's okay. That'll be just fine. So then I, I squish it, seal it up, and there you go. That is it. How easy is that? Much better than this other model right here, this guy, which uh, the so, so Kiwi, so Kiwi brand used way more K5 Pro. It's almost the same weight because this one has a better uh, heatsink on it. But I, I, I dig this uh, Sabrient. Again, it's going to be in the video description below. I have a bunch of K5 Pro left over. Excellent. That's always good because the stuff is like $11. And I got some extra components. I didn't need them. So here we go. I have a USB-C to USB-C that came with it. And now let's go ahead and uh, plug it in and let's see how fast this guy can go. Now one of the first things you want to do is type down here in the bottom, computer management, and let's go into the computer management app. And once we're in computer management, you want to go down to disk management. There you go. It says you must initialize the disk. It realizes it's up. Here we go. All right. So the disk is initialized. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is disk 10. There it is. So we click on the disk 10 and new simple volume. Next. 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 Let's call this one 1TB. One TB external, very easy. Okay, and once it's done, you can see that it will go to be in an NTFS drive and you'll have a new window that's opened up. All right guys, here we go. We're gonna do a speed test on these USB drives. So over here, I've got my fastest 3.1 USB drive. Here, I've got the long-standing NVMe drive that I've been using for video. And this one here is the brand new drive that I just built for you guys. All three are plugged into the same hub. The only advantage that this one might have is that it's plugged into USB-C, whereas this one here is USB 3.1 to USB-C, and this one here is USB 3.1. So the file that I'm gonna be copying over is a 5.2 gigabyte file. So let's go ahead and see how long it takes to copy that same file to each of these. The file's being copied from an onboard NVMe drive, so it's the fastest possible uh, PCI Express 4.0 drive. So it's not gonna be the bottleneck. This right here is gonna show the performance of each drive. So let's go ahead and try with the 3.1 USB drive. And let's see, not too bad. I'm actually getting 39 megabytes per second. That's what I would expect. And you can see this is only a five gig file and it's gonna take me about two minutes and I'm not gonna copy that whole thing over. All right, so let's try my 
older NVMe drive that I've been using. Let's go ahead and paste it here. Wow, look at that guy screaming. There it goes, 320, 330 megabytes per second. It's gonna take about 10 seconds to copy this file. That's what it says, there we go, five gigs, bam, it's done. Okay guys, and here we go. This is the drive that I just built for you. This is using the Samsung 980 Pro SSD. Let's go ahead and paste it. And there you go. It's screaming 330 some megabytes per second. Wow, look how fast it's going. Isn't that crazy? And it's done, five gigs in seconds. That is insane, guys. That is a huge difference. So you take your two NVMe drives and they're both in the 330s. That's the theoretical top end that you're ever gonna get versus this guy over here, which is a standard 3.1. If that doesn't tell you, I don't know how else to convince you. These drives, you can find them all over the place. And the fact is it's a small form factor considering the amount of storage that you're gonna have inside it. But it's also inexpensive. This case right here cost me $25 to $29. And you can put any NVMe drive that you want inside it and you can get these kind of performance figures.